Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 24 of the chapter Equilibrium. In the previous video, I introduced the concept of ionic equilibria to you. And compounds that are ionic in nature are the ones that turn into ions when you put them into solutions. And we categorize the ionic compounds into three categories, that is acids, bases and salts. And in the previous video, I told you about weak acids, strong acids, weak bases, strong bases and how salts also dissociate and they act as electrolytes or non-electrolytes as was defined by Michael Faraday. But before we actually study the ionic equilibria, we need to understand and actually revise a little bit about the acids, bases and salts and then move ahead with our understanding of their equilibria. So in this video, I'm going to uh, be revising and adding just a little bit more to whatever you've done in class 10 and you've studied about the acids, bases and salts. Let's just start with it. When you define acids, what are acids? Anything, anything that you eat and you feel is sour in taste. Now, I'm not saying that you can eat or taste any of the acids, but if you did, you would find that acids are those compounds which taste sour. And anything that tastes bitter is a base. B for bitter and B is a base. So anything that's bitter is usually a base. And anything that's sour is that sourness is due to an acid. We also know from our class 10 studies that acids are those compounds that turn blue litmus red. And bases are those that turn red litmus blue. We did all the other indicators too. In case you've forgotten about the acids and bases, I would encourage you to revise your class 10 syllabus, go back a little and maybe watch a video on the acids, bases and salts and how they react to different kinds of indicators. There are different examples of acids and bases. The main examples, I'm just doing that portion that is in the NCRT, so I'm just taking those examples. There are many, many, plenty of examples of acids and bases. But gastric juice, is mainly hydrochloric acid. It's concentrated hydrochloric acid, which is present in your stomach. And vinegar is a solution of acetic acid. Lemon and orange, oranges, they have citric acid. And tamarind has tartaric acid. Similarly, you have examples of bases. You have washing soda, which is actually a salt. But when you dissolve it in water, it dissociates to give you a base and an acid. The base is sodium hydroxide and the acid is carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid while the sodium hydroxide is a very strong base. So it is that strong base which acts basic and causes the cleaning up. Anyway, sodium hydroxide is an example of a base, magnesium hydroxide. There are different definitions of acids and bases which I'll be doing in the next video. And based on these different definitions of acids and bases, uh, you would be able to tell which substance acts as an acid and which acts as a base just by looking at its, uh, looking at its formula. Now, acids are substances that usually liberate hydrogen gas on reaction with some metals. Why do we say some metals? Because hydrogen also in its reactions behaves as metals. So all those metals which are more reactive than hydrogen would have a tendency to replace it. But those which are less reactive than hydrogen would not replace it. Therefore, the acids that would liberate hydrogen on reaction only with those metals that are more reactive than hydrogen. You've done the activity series of metals in class 10. So from that, you can get an idea of why acids liberate hydrogen only with some of the metals and not with all the metals. Then, I told you that acids are something that are sour in taste. And if you uh, have ever smelled vinegar, it has a pungent odor. You know, it's a strong odor, a sharp smell. So acids usually have that sharp smell. And bases, on the other hand, do not have the sharp smell. So what are uh, one or two more uh, properties of bases? Bases are usually slippery and soapy to touch. Soaps are bases. So how does the soap feel to your hand? It's slippery, it slides. So that slippery and soapy feel is due to a base. And they usually do not have a sharp smell. So these are just a few uh, physical 
you know differences between acids and bases that you see and one odd that is a chemical difference we now come to salts as I told you in the previous video in part 23 I told you when an acid reacts with a base the reaction is known as a neutralization reaction that part of the acid which is positive and the negative part of the base they combine usually the positive part here is hydrogen and the negative part here is OH negative they get together to form water which is neutral and the remaining positive and negative also get together to form a salt so if you want to remove the bitter taste uh, let me say that uh, you're making bitter god bitter god is uh, uh, is bitter in taste and if you want to remove the bitterness of food some things you know they actually do taste bitter and <coughs> excuse me if you want to remove the bitterness of food what do you do you add lemon to it you add lemon juice or you would add tamarind paste to it or you would have add anything that is sour you know mango powder so you would add something sour to it in order to remove the bitterness so what are you actually doing the bitterness was due to the basic nature of the substance and the sour nature was that of an acid so when you added the sour thing to a bitter thing the bitterness was lost and so was the sourness but you did not notice that you only noticed that the substance that you're tasting the food that you're tasting now is no longer bitter so when you carry out when you put something sour in a bitter food it the reaction that is taking place there is actually neutralization reaction and it results in the formation of salt and the neutral substance which usually is water so if you want to remove the bitter taste of food you add something sour and this is actually a neutralization reaction which results in the formation of a salt the salts that are made up of strong acids and strong bases they are usually you know um, they are neutral to litmus they do not react they do not affect litmus but if you have uh, a salt that is made up of a weak acid or a weak base that tends to be affected by the litmus we'll study about this later examples of salts are sodium chloride barium sulfate sodium nitrate there are many magnesium uh, sulfate you could take um, um, what um, chromates so there are lots of lots of salts that you would be studying and when we do our inorganic chemistry we'd be studying much more about these salts what are salts actually they are clusters of ions you know when you have a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion they stay together due to electrostatic forces of attraction and these electrostatic forces of attraction they keep those ions together to add these ions stay together to form solid crystals that is why ionic compounds or salts are usually crystalline in nature so this is a sodium chloride crystal it is not the actual three-dimensional structure but every sodium is surrounded by chlorides and every chloride is surrounded by sodiums and the ratio is one is to one an equal number when you put a salt in water or in a solvent which has a high dielectric constant a dielectric constant is a separation of charges in the in the solvent itself so when it has a high dielectric constant for example water has a dielectric constant of 80 which is a high value so when you put an ionic solvent or ionic salt into or in an ionic that is a compound it may be an acid base or a salt in water due to the high dielectric constant of water that much of uh, attraction between the electrostatic forces of attraction between the ions is reduced as a result of that high dielectric constant of water high dielectric constant means that the water molecule has oxygen which is negatively charged and hydrogens which are positively charged the separation of charges between the hydrogen and oxygen they affect the ions the oxygen which is negatively charged starts attracting the positively charged ion of the uh, of the salt so sodium will be attracted by oxygen which i've shown by the red ball and the chloride which is negative will be attracted by the hydrogens now this attraction will start pulling these ions away from the crystal and then 
therefore it would make the movement of the ions of the crystal into the solution easier see if you had to just move on your own or if you were assisted you were being pulled by something obviously if there is an attraction there's a pull you would go faster and if there's no attraction there's no real charm in really entering the solution you would be slower so the sodium chloride or these ionic crystals due to the high dielectric constant of water they lose some of their or the effect of the electrostatic forces of attraction reduces as a result of which these ions they start separating easily and when they separate the ionic compound is said to be dissociated or it is said to be ionized although dissociation and ionization are two different terms but in equilibrium we use them synonymously when we say they dissociate it means the, the ions they separate and they get dissolved in the liquid and there is another thing when you have this high dielectric constant as a result of which the ions move into water now that the water molecules they surround the ions and they surround the ions and their such ions are said to be hydrated how are they surrounded a positive ion will have all the oxygens around it and the hydrogens would be on the outside they would form spheres you know of of ion clusters or rather ion with the water molecules in such a way that the positively charged ion is surrounded by oxygens and the hydrogens are on the sides therefore forming a big cluster of a uh, sodium ion with water molecules this is said to be hydrated sodium ions similarly the chloride ions would also be hydrated but what would be the difference the oxygens would be touching the chloride ion and the uh, sorry the hydrogens would be touching the chloride ions which are positive and the oxygens would be towards the outside so such clusters they are said to be hydrated ions so these hydrated ions they keep the ions separated and do not allow the crystal to be reformed so there are two things that help in the dissolution of these ionic compounds in water one is the high dielectric constant of water and the second is the hydration of the ions now when we talk of water we say the dielectric constant of water when you have some other solvent you will call it the high whatever the dielectric constant of the other solvent is and if you uh, if something similar to hydration occurs we call that process solvation it is the same thing only in the case of water we call it hydration and the high dielectric constant of water since water has a high dielectric constant that's the reason why it is such a good solvent right it is known as a universal solvent because of it you'll be studying about this in when you do solutions so that is about hydration of ions and how ions they get dissociated and how salts they get dissolved in water and not all salts dissolve in water there are some which would not dissolve but we'll study about those later so there are some it is usually the more the strong ionic compounds which are there they are the ones which would dissociate easily in water so this was again a little bit more about acids bases and salts in the next video i'm going to tell you the different definitions of acids and bases and how you can identify acids and bases on the basis of the these different definitions and then i'll tell you about the conjugate acids and conjugate bases and then we'll move on to our study of equilibrium with um, taking acid bases and salts uh, into into our concentration so with this i'll finish this video if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.